By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Often Troll Cup, the third edition of this tournament held in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands. And we have reached the semi-finals. And this is going to be between D, who's bringing his core set only deck to the table, Often Trollion Angel. It's white, it's blue and it's red. And he's facing the deck of Anne. And Anne is playing this beautiful reanimator deck, blue, black and red. And I just have to say, both of these decks... I would definitely stick around for the deck decks because both of these deck photos, they're just absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to see these decks in action. It's just unbelievable. Uh, but before we start with the deck decks, I would just like to point out that as always, you can also skip the, the whole introduction. You can skip the whole deck deck if you want to, and you can do that the easiest uh, by just checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on MTG Games, it will take you straight to the action. And as for here, we are going to start with the deck deck. And I'm going to start with the deck of D. Let's take a look at this Often Trollion Angel deck. And here we see the deck of D. And this probably will look familiar because we also covered this deck in the quarterfinal match of last week. So this deck is completely corset, alpha, beta only, completely black bordered. It's just a beauty to behold. And I kind of, I really appreciate it, you know, when somebody says, I'm just going to go with only Alpha Beta or I'm going to go with, you know, only Revised or I'm going to go with only Four Horsemen. I kind of like that. I like it when you give yourself a little design challenge. And I also like it when you appreciate the aesthetics of, um, you know, of your deck. It's, it's, magic is more, to me at least, it's, it's more than just what are the best cards in the color. I'm going to put them together and then I'm going to have the best result. It's always like, okay... What kind of cards do I want to play? What kind of deck do I want to show? One of the unique things about Magic is that customization. You can make your own deck. Doesn't mean it's bad to copy somebody else's idea. I'm not saying that, you know, but it's just really cool when you see people, you know, trying to do their own thing. Does that mean it cannot be competitive? Oh, of course not. It can be super competitive. Look at this. I mean, it made the semifinals. And also looking at the choices that he's made, he's made a lot of staple choices. It makes sense. You know, you're doing core set only. Lightning Bolt, Disenchant, Psionic Blast. Uh, we're seeing all of the usual restricted cards. We see the full power nine in this deck. So it is a very strong deck. But at the same time, it's also a very beautiful deck. And I kind of like the, th the, the fact that he's that he, he has not let himself be tempted into choosing to go for specific cards from the Four Horsemen sets that were probably really kind of breathing in his neck, like, oh, maybe if I just add this card from um, from the Four Horsemen set, it would be a little bit better. And no, he chose to, you know, to stick to his game plan and say, no, I'm going to do Alpha Beta only. And he made it to the semis. How cool is that? Maybe even he's going to make it to the finals. Maybe he's going to win the tournament. Who knows? Anyway, this is D's deck. Um, if you want to know more about the deck and, and my opinion about this specific deck, uh, the technical side of the deck, uh, please check out the episode of last week because there I did a bit more of an extensive deck deck. Anyway, this is D's deck, the Often Trollion Angel. And now we're going to have a look at the deck of his opponent, Anna. And here we see the other semi-finalist in this match. It is Anna's Reanimator deck. Oh man, this is just... Absolutely beautiful. I mean, there are so many beef boys in this deck. I played this deck as well at the tournament. So much fun to play against. I had a couple of control magics that makes it even more fun. But anyway, let's look at the deck. Uh, first, the colors, right? Blue, red, and black. And that means there's space for Solkanar, the Swamp King. Solkanar is just a really, really good card. It's one of those cards that also, if you're not playing Reanimator, but you're playing this color combination, you're probably going to play Solkanar. It's a 5-5 five, five for 5. It's just really, really good. Plus, you gain a life every time a black spell comes into play. And believe me, that can sometimes be very, very relevant. I mean, you'd be surprised the amount of times you probably can get through another turn because you somewhere in the game cashed a couple of life through your Solkanar. It's pretty cool. So we've got the Solkanar, but of course the idea of this deck, it is a reanimator deck, is to get a lot of your bigger creatures into the bin as fast as you can and then reanimate them with, of course, Animate Dead, All Hallows Eve. So how are you going to get your cards in the bin? With Bazaar of Baghdad. So Bazaar of Baghdad, a land from Arabian Nights that allows you to draw two cards. I know it's insane, but hear me out. You also have to discard 
three cards. Now, this used to be considered as one of the worst lands in Arabian Nights, right? Because why would you want to draw two and discard three? That's horrible. That's card disadvantage. It's even worse. You're throwing your cards away. They end up in a graveyard. You can't use them anymore. Well, can you? It didn't take magic players very long to understand, wait a minute, my graveyard could actually be used as a second library maybe even a better library than my main library by using Anime Dead and All Hallows Eve. So All Hallows Eve, of course, one of the coolest cards in Magic, Sorcery from Legends, black card, uh, you cast it and then there are two kind of time counters on there uh, being placed on All Hallows Eve. Then during the upkeep, those counters go away and when those counters are gone, um, all the creatures in all graveyards come into play. So, I mean, that's just insane. And obviously, when you're the one playing Reanimator and Bazaar of Baghdad, you will have a lot more fatties in your graveyard than your opponent. At least, that should be the case. So, it's just, it's incredibly strong. And I think the Bazaar of Baghdads will be, you know, are just working insane in this deck. It will really allow Ana to quickly fill his graveyard with big creatures. The Sylvan Library will allow him to add extra cards to his hand. Um, you know, and then... As soon as he's got the cards that he needs, he's got all the pieces, he's going to play out All Hallows Eve or Anime Dead, have a big fetty on the board or multiple big fetties and win the game. And what I really like is, is the plan of this deck. The plan of this deck is to win the game with big, cool creatures. I love that. I really love that. Because what's cooler than, you know, getting Shivan Dragon, Mahamoti Jin, uh, Soul Canard the Swamp King on the board, you know? And yes, he's also playing with Triskelion. I get that. Personally, I would have rather seen like Force of Nature or something, but I do understand why you're going to go for Triskelion because it's just so good against all those pesky 1-1 creatures like the Prodigal Sorcerer. So I, I, I get it. It's probably competitively the better choice to go for that one. Anyway, this is the deck of Anna. I'm really looking forward to see it go off in the semifinals. I'm sure it will because it has been doing great the entire day. And uh, I guess that means we're ready to go to the semifinals. D versus Anna. Let's go. Game number one here with Anna on the uh, play. And he's taken a mulligan, by the way. So he's now drawing three cards. So that means after taking a mull, he started with six. So now he's back up on seven. And he's passing turn here to D. Let's see what he can do. But that's, of course, a great start by Ana here with that Ancestral Recall. So the semi-final match, who's going to make it to the finals? There we see an Underground Sea by D as well. Look at all that black-bordered goodness. Mox Sapphire. Will he be able to put some pressure on? There is a Mox Jet. <laughs> Mox Pearl. Okay. Is he just going to play out his entire hand here, turn one? Is there going to be a balance? Interesting. And I think in this case, it could kind of backfire on D. Because remember, Ana is playing Reanimator. He wants to discard cards. So he's going to discard four here, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Looking at the cards again. I mean, what he wants to put, do here is put a few big creatures in the bin. Look at that Mahamoti Jin. Oh, it's not too bad. Just a Mahamoti. So it's not the worst balance, but I do understand kind of the hesitation from D here. Does he really want to play it? Here we go. There we see an anime dead. And this is kind of what uh, Dion made possible with that balance. There he's going to draw. And remember, the Mahamoti Jin is now a 4-6 because it gets minus O minus, uh, sorry, minus 1 minus O from the anime dead. And can D now do something against this Mahamoti Jin? That's the big question. There we see a Savannah Alliance. That's not going to do much. And a pass turn here. Another Underground C tapping it. There's a Soul Ring and there's an attack for four. D is going to drop to 16 and a pass. And the thing is, he's playing with Psionic Blast and with Lightning Bolt, but both of those cards are not going to help him get rid of the Mahamoti. What he really needs here is a Disenchant to get rid of that anime dead. Just one Disenchant and uh, he's done. You know, the Mahamoti's done, but for now, it's a pretty big problem. He's going to drop to 12, just a pass from Ana here. Although Ana has uh, 5 mana, not enough to cast anything. He's going to drop to 16, there's a pass. I mean, things are looking really good. For Ana, I mean, he, he just keeps attacking with his Mahamoti, and maybe that will grant him the victory in this first game. There's the untap here by D. He really needs 
That disenchant. And another pass. Oh man, this is starting to look really, really bad for D. It's going to drop to four. Then untap the lions. Another line. That's it. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, he didn't have a red source. I wanted to say, why didn't he play the Wheel of Fortune? But he didn't have a red source to do so. And wow, what a... Sometimes these games are just really odd, you know. Uh, really simple, I should say. Sometimes you just win with one big creature and you keep attacking and your opponent has no answer. That's exactly what happened here. Luckily, it's just game number one because I'm hoping for a lot more fireworks. So both of these players are going to go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. D is on the player starting with the plateau and there is a Savannah Lions in the pass. And this Savannah Lions can actually do a lot of work as long as, you know, Ana cannot fill the bin with, okay, there we see <laughs> Basara back that turn one. I wanted to say as long as Ana cannot fill the bin with big creatures. There we go. Oh man, Solkanar, Shivan Dragon, Triss Kellyan. And I mean, chances are pretty high that, uh, that Ana has like an anime dead in hand or an All Hallows Eve. If he can ramp out like an All Hallows Eve turn two or turn three, this will be absolutely disastrous for D. And remember, he has to win this after losing that first game. There's an attack for two, so Ana's gonna drop to 18. There's an Ancestral Recall. Okay, that's good news. Three cards for D here. Is he going to find maybe some jewelry? Yeah, there's a Mox. And I think Disenchants are going to be super crucial in this, in this matchup, right? We saw that in game number one with that anime dead on the Mahamoti. D didn't have an answer and D died. There we see Lotus. Cracking the Lotus or not? Taking it back. Okay, cracking the Lotus. Oh, Hallow's Eve. Oh, man. This is bad news for D. This is going to be like the shortest semifinals ever here on Timmy Talks. I really hope not because both of these decks are so cool. Remember, All Hallows Eve comes into play with two scream counters on All Hallows Eve. Every upkeep, a scream counter goes away. When there are no scream counters anymore on All Hallows Eve, then all creatures in all graveyards come back onto the battlefield. There we see an attack with the lions on the dropping to 16. Wanted to play out the Scrubland, but takes it back, playing out to Tundra instead. I mean, this is so bad for D here. He's looking at that old Hallow's Eve, looking at the intimidating graveyard of Anna, taking off a Scream Counter. And remember, if Anna draws into more big beef boys, he can use the Bazaar to even discard more. He's not doing that here, passing on after playing out a City of Brass. And it looks like D wants to do something here on end step. Maybe he wants to go super aggro. But the problem is Ana is still really high up on life, asking for the amount of cards in hand. A balance in this case would actually really, really help D, of course, waiting for the All Hallows to resolve and then casting a balance. And yeah, okay, so he's going for that life total. On here, going to 13, he's gonna attack him again. That means he's gonna go to 11. But then the problems will start for D. Remember, D is playing with four psionic blasts and four lightning bolts in his deck. So that's a lot of direct damage. I mean, he can attack on exactly, put him on 11. That means if he's got a bolt and two psi blasts, it's already game. I mean, he doesn't have the mana to play them out yet, but I mean, he could start doing that, of course. And bolt his way to victory here. But next turn, we are going to see that All Hallows Eve activation. That's just going to be insane. And D really in the tank here. This is the second game. He lost the first game. He needs to win this one to stay in this tournament. Semi-finals of the Ufton Troll Cup. What can he do here? Okay, tapping. What are we going to see? Untapping again. <laughs> Asking something. Intimidating pointing. There's a Demonic Tutor. Interesting. 
So that means that, you know, if he's got a side blast and a bolt in hand, he can look up the last side blast to kind of win this game, right? Because that's enough for 11 damage. I really wonder what he's going to do here. Obviously, his choice is, is really influenced by what's in his hand. Here we see the deck again of D. So like I said, he could go for more burn, but that depends on the amount of burn in hand. Um, perhaps a balance. If he boarded in the control magic from the sideboard, which I think he did, the control magic could also be great. Remember, um, Alna is not playing with any enchantment removal, I believe. So a control magic is really good against him. Yeah, what else could he do here? A blue blast to get rid of the Sheevan. But yeah, that only solves one problem. He could get his own Sheevan. But yeah, you know, then he's still low on the amount of creatures. Yeah, it's difficult. He could get a time walk for an extra turn to deal an extra two points of damage. It so depends on also like the amount of direct damage that's already in the hand of Dion. I think without knowing what's in his hand, I think I would go for balance or control magic. And then kind of hope that, um, you know, Ana will kill the Savannah Lions. On the other hand, Ana is a really good player, so <laughs> I don't think he will do that. Also remember, um, you know, D has black mana here. So that means that the Solkanar is going to be unblockable. It does have Swamp Walk. So that is a huge problem as well for D. And, uh, you know, it makes absolute sense that he takes this long to kind of figure out what to do. And here we see the three creatures coming on the board for Anna here. The All Hallows Eve resolves. So a Trike, a Sheevan Dragon, and a Solkanar, the Swamp King. And it's just great to see a Sheevan Dragon in the semifinals of such a big tournament. It's fantastic. And there we see him tapping some more. Oh, a Time Walk! This just, this is brutal, man. It's, oh, man. That is insane. Is this just going to be the win here for Anna? I think it is. Does he have a red blast in hand? If he does, I can't believe this time walk. I mean, D was already hanging on a threat, but I was hoping that he would get that extra turn. Let's hope he's got a red elemental blast here. I hope so. Come on, play it out. Red element. Yes! Oh, interesting. On Solkanar, not on the time walk. Wow, I'm surprised. Does he have more removal? Getting rid of the Sheevan. Wow. This surprises me. And of course, like I said, when, when D casts the Demonic Tutor, his choice is so dependable on what's already in his hand. So he probably already had some top removal in hand. Wow. And he's saying, you know what? Just take the extra turn. I don't care. I can take the four damage from the trike. Gonna drop to 16. Animate that. Oh. And now I really hope to see a disenchant. That is, of course, the problem that, you know, you get, you deal with the creature by killing him, but then it goes into the bin. And that's exactly what Anna wants. He can just get it back. He doesn't mind. The bin is his second library. It's his home. Oh, man. Can D survive this? Can he pull another rabbit out of the hat here? Hopefully he has a disenchant. Deciding to play it main, I think that's a good decision. Because, you know, if you let Anna untap and he's got some kind of counter magic, and there we see Anna killing the Savannah Lines here. And it's actually looking pretty okayish for D here. Of course, the problem is if Anna can find another All Hallows Eve or another Animate Dead, but for now, he's kind of in the clear. Gonna go to 13. There's a regrowth on Animate and the Animate. For a moment there, I thought he was going to do regrowth on All Hallows Eve, but this makes more sense because he can do both things in the same turn. Put full pressure on D. Man, this is going to be really difficult. Only two cards in hand left for D. Tapping five. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel here? Okay, there's a Sarah Angel. At least it's something. Remember, the Solkanar is unblockable because of Swamp Walk. But at least now D can block the trike. So that's going to save him three points of damage. There we see an orb. Oh, man. We're going to see an orb flip. 
Ooh, is it gonna hit? Yes, it's gonna hit. Too much experience there to miss the flip, I guess. There's an attack for seven. D is gonna drop here all the way to six. It's looking very dire for D. He made it all the way to the semis, but in the semis, it looks like he's gonna be stopped by the reanimator power of Anna. That's it, that's game. Oh man. And I have to say, I mean, D really didn't stand a chance. He didn't stand a chance. I think he did really well recovering from that All Hallows Eve activation, much better than I thought. And, and like I said, I think the direct damage plan was the only way he could have won that second game. And you know, the first game, yeah, you, you make the decision to go for the balance. And, and what if what if Ana didn't have that one beef creature or didn't have that one way to get it, that one uh, anime dead to get it back, you know, then he probably would have won the game. But if, if, ifs, you know, that's that's not gonna win it in Magic. And uh, Anna has made it here to the finals. Congratulations, Anna. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the finals. I'm hoping to, to really see a thriller of a match in the finals. This was a little bit one-sided, uh, but still great to see both of these decks in action. Thank you, D, and thank you, Anna, for bringing these decks to the table and, uh, and for playing here at the Often Troll Cup. And that was it for the semi-final. So that means that next week, we're gonna have the last match video of the Often Troll Cup. Unfortunately, it's been such a great tournament. But the cool thing is we are going to see the finals. Who's actually going to win the Often Troll Cup? Will it be on this reanimator deck, which is kick-ass? Or will it be this deck? This is the deck from his opponent next week, Wilfred. And as you can see, it is pretty fierce as well. It's got some Atox in there. It's got some direct damage. It's got those white control cards. It's got some more Savannah Lions. So, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's gotta be really an interesting finals. I think this is kind of 50-50 to be honest, but let me know in the comments below who you think is going to be the favorite. And as for now, we are gonna go to the end scroll, but before we go to the end scroll, I would just like to ask you to do a few things to help the channel. Please consider liking this video if you enjoy the content that I make. Also leave a comment and share it on your socials or all great ways of how you can help the channel move forward. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm really happy that you found Timmy Talks. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is you can become a patron of Timmy Talks by joining the Timmy Talks Patreon program. And it already starts with $1 a month. And by supporting me financially, you're also helping me keep developing the channel, keep the channel alive, and keep me doing what I really enjoy doing most in my free time, which is making old school magic movies and actually playing old school magic. I also love to do that. Um, anyway, so please consider visiting the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And if you do, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. And the end scroll is something that you'll see at the end of every video. Every video? Yes. So also this video. Let's take a look at our amazing, fantastic, wunderbar channel members and patrons. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.